Our readings today are found in Acts 2, verses 42 through 47, Psalm 23, the first letter of Peter 2, verses 19 through 25, and our gospel comes from John 10, verses 1 through 10. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, give us new strength from the courage of Christ our shepherd, and lead us to join the saints in heaven where he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The fourth Sunday of Easter is commonly known as Good Shepherd Sunday. And had we continued to read the verses following today's gospel lesson, we would indeed read all about Jesus referring to himself as, I am the Good Shepherd. However, in today's lesson, Jesus refers to himself as, I am the gate for the sheep. In fact, Jesus begins by saying, Very truly I tell you, anyone who does not enter the sheepfold by the gate, but climbs in by another way, is a thief and a bandit. There is so much it seems hidden to me in this passage than meets the eye, and I hope I don't entangle myself as I try to weave my way through this passage. For instance, although there is no mention in today's lesson, as I, I, I couldn't help but think, why do we often refer to Jesus as the Lamb of God? The first time we hear Jesus called the Lamb of God is in John 1, 29. The next day, John saw Jesus coming toward him and declared, here is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Is this why there is so much reference to shepherds and sheep? If we were to go back to John 5, 2, we would read, now in Jerusalem, by the sheep gate, there is a pool called Bethesda, which has five porticos. In this lay many invalids, blind, lame, and paralyzed. You will recall that it was on the Sabbath that Jesus healed the paralyzed man who had been coming to the pool for 38 years. Healing on the Sabbath was forbidden by law of that time. This may have been the first time of Jesus' many deeds that turned the Jewish authorities' attention toward him. And that is why they began to keep a very close vigilance on Jesus. In my mind, I see the fabric of facts that begins to unfold, and the thread begins to tie the beginning of Jesus' ministry to the end, his crucifixion. I believe this particular lesson is but the introduction to our understanding of what led to the crucifixion. The Lamb of God is indeed the gate through which all who claim to be believers must enter. But being the gate does not promise believers that they are out of danger. Let's go back and try to visualize a sheepfold. In Jesus' time, and perhaps in this day and time in countries where sheep herding is common, the sheepfold is usually an area blocked off by a stone wall where many of the shepherds in the area would bring their sheep at the end of the day. All the sheep were enclosed, and the shepherds would keep, keep turns keeping watch. But as stated in the lesson, anyone could climb in and steal or kill the sheep. These Jesus referred to as thieves or bandits, a not so subtle reference to the Pharisees. And any of the shepherds who took turns guarding the gate could easily fall asleep and miss hearing anyone coming in. The interesting thing is that all the sheep are together, and yet they respond only to their own shepherd's call, whether it's a whistle, a sound, or a particular word. But Jesus refers to himself as the gate, the only one through whom we, the sheep, can go in and out. The Reverend Paul Neoctiline, senior pastor at Prince of Peace Lutheran Church in Portage, Michigan states, Jesus is indeed the shepherd who leads the sheep into the paddock of the Passover sacrificial slaughter and then goes on in before us, taking our place. The narration of the Passion story carefully places Jesus' slaughter on the Passover. I think that this Good Shepherd passage needs to be understood in that larger context of Jesus as the Lamb of God. 
And those of you who have heard me at St. Augustine's preach on and off for the past eight years know that my favorite author, theologian, professor is Dr. Brown, Barbara Brown Taylor. Bear with me as I read from her book, The Preaching Life, for I could never express these thoughts as well as she so profoundly writes. How long will you keep us in suspense, they asked him. If you are the Christ, tell us plainly. Jesus knew what Christ meant to some of them, a warrior king, a political messiah. But Jesus also seemed to know that the question itself was a problem. If they had not been able to read the signs he had already performed, if they had not been able to understand the sermons that he had already preached, then they would not be able to believe a simple, yes, I am the Christ. He seemed to know that they were not asking because they wanted to believe, but because they wanted to debate, to talk, to accuse, to argue. You do not believe, Jesus said, because you do not belong to my sheep. You do not believe, Jesus says, because you do not belong to my sheep. What a chilling verdict that is. Yet I wonder, on what grounds do most of us doubt our membership in Christ's flock? Who keeps us out? Is it the Lord himself blocking our way with his shepherd's step? Or do we do this all by ourselves, disqualifying ourselves from the flock because we don't believe or we don't believe enough or we don't believe in the right way? Is it that you do not pray enough, witness enough, read enough theology? Is it that you are not knowledgeable enough or enthusiastic enough or sure enough about what you really believe? Whatever it is, please stop it. Please stop exiling yourself from the flock because of your beliefs about what it takes to belong and see if you cannot allow yourself to belong simply because God says you do. You do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep, Jesus says, but listen to what he says. Jesus does not say that we are in and out of the flock depending on our ability to believe. It's the exact opposite, in fact. He says our ability to believe depends on whether we are in or out of the flock, and there is every reason to believe that we are in, my fully friends, if only because we all sit together to worship. If that is the case, then chances are the way true believers believe is the way most of us believe, valiantly on some days, pitifully on others, with faith enough to move mountains on some occasions and not enough to get out of bed on others. Our belief is less like certainty than like trust or hope. So if sometimes you have trouble hearing the voice of your shepherd, be patient with yourself, because some days it sounds like a whistle, and some days it sounds like a cluck, and some days it sounds like a love song, and sometimes almost a curse. It is not a voice that always speaks in words, let alone complete sentences, but you can usually hear it sometime between the time you get up and the time you go to bed that night leading you to still waters, restoring your soul. Be patient with yourself. And while you're at it, be patient with the rest of us. You cannot follow a shepherd all by yourself, after all. But stick with the flock. It is where the shepherd can be found, which makes your best bet, not only for survival, but for joy. Above all, understand that you belong here as part of the flock. If you don't believe anything else, believe that. Believe that whether you are here because you believe or because you want to believe, you are here because you belong to God's sheep, just like the rest of us. And because we do, we hear his voice. He knows us, and we follow him, and he gives us eternal life and we shall never perish, 
and no one shall snatch us out of his hand. Believe it or not, here we are, and here we belong. Dear friends, I could not have said this better than this wonderful author. But this pandemic right now has not only interrupted our traditional worship, it's kept us from being with the flock. It is with being with one another and seeing one another. That's what we truly miss. But it is our steadfast faith that keeps us together until we can once again gather together as one flock. In the meantime, those who have learned today's lesson have no problem being good shepherds or good sheep. The rest of us, we have a lifetime to try to learn this lesson. The Good Shepherd already knows us. We have promised the Lord is my shepherd. And on the final day of our journey on this earth, someone will stand over our remains and say, into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock.